Hi, this is Todd Prophet at uh, SUNY Fredonia, and I'm going to show you a quick tutorial on Virtual Light Lab. Uh, when you open the screen, when you open the program, you're going you're gonna to get this screen right here. This is essentially the stage screen. You've got a model on the stage against a backdrop. You can actually take that model and move it around anywhere you want, or if you want, you can add a model. Right now, I've actually purchased the uh, several more models that I can use um, for uh, it's, it's a it's a model add-on pack. Uh, if not, you get Lucy and maybe just a couple more with the with the base program. Um, once you get the model, uh, you're going to want to you can light each model individually, and you just double click on the model. Okay, then you're going to get into the the lighting screen, and you can light that in you're only lighting that individual person as you're looking at the model thing to remember is the model is standing in the center of the stage and this is a physical grid all the way around so if you want to hang a light on top you just grab the light and you can move it you can move the light to anywhere there's uh, two lines cross so I can move it here so the center line is actually right above the person pull it back and it's gonna be right behind or if you want to do a front light you have several different options for a front light, but you can move it around to be a side light or low lighting, okay, or even more of say a box boom position. But anywhere where there's two crosshairs, you can actually move the light around. If you want, you can add another light. Simply go down here to the light and drag it out. Then you can start doing things like your three-point modeling. But obviously, wow, this is way too bright. We need to change the intensity. So if you want to change the intensity, you can click here, and that will change the intensity. Or this bar, you can use it to change the intensity. Or I use the keyboard shortcuts, which are the easiest. Go to 1 is at 10%. 5 is 50, so any of the numeric keys. If you want to go to full, you can click F. That will take it to full. But now let's take that down to 50%. Let's click on this one, take that to 70%. And yeah, we want to keep our backlight at full. Now, if I wanted to make both of these the same, you can actually shift click, select both of them at once. Let's take them both to 60%, and then the lighting will change accordingly. As you're looking at the light, you're going to see over here a close up on the face. So you can actually see, get a little better idea of what the what the lighting is, is doing to the face. Um, if you want, you can actually click on paint and that will bring up um, something will and it's actually going to let you paint the person so if the person was orange or blue or something like that the, the, the thing is it doesn't just change your clothes it actually changes the whole um, body and I just command Z I just un hit click undo to fix that back up alright so once you get the lights where you want them you can start to add color uh, below you've got a really large um, library of, of colors you can use. One of the reasons why I love Virtual Light Lab is I can sit in here and I can change colors out quickly and click until I get just the right color that I want for the scene. Now, the thing to remember is this is not an exact replication of what the lighting is going to be. It's close though. Um, I could do this in a real light lab but for me to test all you know test 500 gels would take a long time. This is a really quick and easy way in which you can change colors and, and, and sort of get a sense of what you're going to want to, what colors you're going to want for the particular scene. Oh, that's just ugly. Um, and this will allow you to, um, again, experiment and, and play around. Once you get the lighting where you want it, oh, before I forget, colors. If you want, you can also click on a box over here, or you can drag if there's colors that you use a lot and you want to keep, you can just add them to your, your quick color. So if I've got a palette that I'm thinking about for a show, then I'll actually just put them in here so that I can, um, so I don't have to search all over for the colors that I want. All right. Once we get everything where we want, then we can actually go back to the stage screen and that person is lit. Well, if we want the entire stage to look like that and everyone on the stage to look like that, you can actually go into their model. You can copy the lighting. Then you can come over here and then you can actually paste the lighting. If you want, you can also have it show you or remind you real quick where all of those that that lighting is coming from. And again, that was under model, wasn't it? Yep, show color key. Um, once you get 
the people set up the way you want. You got the background. You can double click the background and change it. And you can just like before you can use any color you want. You can make that the background color. You have several backdrop options. You have to actually be in the, the main screen to do this. Go to backdrop. I can make see what that light looks like on a blue backdrop. A black backdrop. And this is in theory, so if it's black, it's going to absorb all of the color. There's the gray backdrop colors. Um, and I believe this is showing you the colors that are actually being uh, transmitted with the lights that you're using. Um, and then the last way is an image. Okay. And the great thing is with the image is you can import. If you go to import image, you can actually import an image in. Um, and we'll go back here. Oops, let me take that to full. Okay. Now this is actually just a set picture that I imported from the show. Eh, it's kind of fun having him stand on that. No. Put him there. Okay. So you can actually put him in the scene. Now, usually you're not going to have the finished set picture like I have right here. But what you can do is you can take scenic renderings, you can take scenic models and you can photograph them um, or what I've also done in the past is I'll go into Photoshop and I'll you know rough out the blocks or rough out a background of what it's gonna look like so that I can actually add some context to um, the scene itself now the um, once you get uh, the scene set up the way you like you can actually go ahead and record it so we're just gonna go ahead and record this as a scene okay you can label it if you want Q1 and make that a time of two okay you can then go in and if you want you can change the lighting there we go and let's go ahead and add in a footlight to one of the things I already tell you I forgot to mention was you can also add templates to the lights just by putting that in just grab the template and move it uh, virtual light lab only comes with one template it's only a breakup template um, so you really don't have any have any much choices in that but this will at least allow you to add some texture so once we've got her changed a little bit then we can actually go in and record a new scene all right and again, this will be Q2. Make that a three second Q. Okay, and then we're going to go in and we're going to change his lighting a little bit. Um, let's go to just a silhouette. Okay, and then we're going to record this as Q3. Time one. And last but not least, we're going to record a black scene to end it. All right. Once you get these all done, you can go back and you can load an old cue if you want. So we can load that scene to the stage. Okay. Or if you want, you can actually go to the slideshow. And you can actually play through the cues. One at a time. So his light will go out. Then you can do a fade to black. Now all this is literally doing is taking a picture and it's little it's fading from scene to scene. So if I go to I want to actually let's fix Q3. Let's load this scene to stage. And what if I want to move him down here so the backlighting is more realistic? Then I can actually update the scene. Okay, now if I, let's go back and look at our slideshow again. When you hit play, see it's just going to fade him from one place to another. He's not actually going to move. Um, once you're all done, you can uh, save this and then call it up to, to show somebody again. You can show like a director of the scenes or maybe uh, if you're in a production, you can show them sort of a rough idea of what you're thinking about uh, for the show. Uh, let me just double 
check real quick and see if there's anything that I have forgotten. You can obviously print the scenes out, which is um, kind of nice. I think that's pretty much everything I want to show you. Although if you Command M, it will actually show you. Um, uh, 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 sorry, it will magnify the scene. You can copy that and paste that to uh, something else. It's fairly low, res low resolution, so it's not... Again, this is great for storyboarding, it's great for rough sketches, but it's not going to be 100%. Alright, I think that's all I want to show you today, so before you leave, don't forget to save your work. And um, if you need, have any questions, you can uh, email me at todd.profit at fredonia.edu. Thanks.